Hello and welcome to Ashley Ann's Hands. Little lesson on core spinning Angora with a tailspin. It may sound like a mouthful, but uh, Angora is a pretty fine micron count, so if you haven't done this a lot, it's best to use a core, something that'll stick to the bunny to the Angora rabbit. So I have a pretty thin cotton core, but um, a mohair actually might be best. And I'm hoping that you purchased my uh, expressly sheared Angora. This is particularly English Angora. In fact, this is Harry Belafonte. And I sheared him so that all of his fibers are going in one direction. That's what makes this so expensive and so much fun, is that I shear expressly with the intention of tail spinning. So I'm specifically keeping these fibers in the direction with the cut edge towards the core. And I'm pressing it here between my pointer finger and my thumb. And as I spin, it pulls it in and kind of wraps around. And I'll probably decrease the speed a little and come back out a little to get a start and show you. They're a little spun around now, but when you wet and set this, these fibers are going to come out and they're going to hang in the direction they would hang if they were on the bunny. In this case, Harry Belafonte. So, and you don't have to be too particular, but it won't work if it's in a traditional roving and it won't work so easy if the fibers are all going in a different direction. So even though I grabbed these and they kind of fell apart, you can scooch them into your hand so that you've got the ends facing the core and you kind of pull away. So it's a bit of a pinch. This is something for an experienced spinner and somebody who's worked with Angora before or maybe you just have a flair for it. So it sounds like my wheel needs a little bit of oil. So I'm going to stop. You can see how that came out very nice. And um, put a little oil on my wheel. Okay, so hopefully that stopped my squeak. And also, something else you can keep handy is a little spray bottle. Something with, I like to put lavender oil and a little water just to um, keep the static down so that things don't stick to your hand, stick to the wheel. Um, not so much that you start to mat and felt the Angora. Now again, I'm taking right from my one ounce box and grabbing in a way that it keeps all of the fibers in the same direction. So you get a good handful here. And you can also press your hand down to separate those. It'll keep them in a good direction. And just get your hand on them. It's not rocket science, but um, it's definitely rabbit science. So I still have a little bit of a squeak, but that's okay. The metronome. And I'm going to slow down a little so that you can actually see how this is attaching. And of course you want to be careful that you keep the fibers in the orifice. Now I have a larger mother of all in here, but it's not 
as big as the country spinner and it's not as big as the traditional. You can see it's going through there quite nicely without a problem. Got another good section, all the fibers going in the right direction. Pinching them between my thumb and my pointer here and kind of pulling away to create that wispiness. Now even though it wraps around that core, it's still going to come off when um, you set it with water. And I still like to put a little lavender in my water. You kind of go with it, figure it out as you go. Now you can see it's going to fluff up and you're not going to see much of the core at all, if any. You can also choose a colorful core to show through a little. That would work as well. I kind of like the bunny to just be itself. I can also auto wrap. If you're familiar with that, it's having a ply kind of find its own space around the outside of the yarn. Of course, I'm going clockwise, so you would do, you know, the Z spin which I will show you when this is done. And it's okay when you're going for another handful to let this fall pretty tight, but try to stay pretty fat on that core. Reaching over. Also, this fiber is in a direction that the cut end of the staple is against the side on either side of the box. There's two lines of staples so that the tip of the bunny fiber is overlapping in the middle. This way when you go to reach in and grab a piece, it's all stacked up very nicely against the side of the plastic box to try to help you to keep all of these beautiful, luxurious bunny fibers going in the same direction. You can start up a little higher now um, and overlap a little bit of that angora on the top there. So you won't see it. Like I said, it's kind of a nifty little pull away. And it will come just gorgeous. Slowing down a little, get a little carried away. but I think you get the hang of it. And you can see even with that little bit, we've already got quite a bit on the bobbin, considering it's only three or four handfuls, and there's still quite a bit left in the box. Okay, so if you want to kind of thicken it up, maybe you don't want that little bit, Try a little slower and you can overlap. You can go back onto what you've already done and kind of thicken it up a little if you're preferring it that way. If you're not worried about making it go as far as you have to, if you are going to embellish something and you want it to be a little thicker, you can kind of go over it again. Catch up with it. Or grab bigger tufts and hold on to it longer so that the twist holds a larger amount in better. Of course, keeping attention that you don't clog your orifice here. And I also keep a little spray handy, just very gentle. You don't want to hurt the wheel and you don't want to overwet the fiber, but it, it keeps the static down, makes the Angora rabbit a little easier to deal with. And if you put a little lavender oil or one of your favorite smells in there, it's, um, it's kind of pleasant. You can also, in the general area, just kind of hit the box very lightly. It will help you to, to grab off like I talked about. Take a little, hold the rest down, get a good grip there with all of your end fibers going in the same direction. 
start again. Remember we grab with our pointer finger and our thumb and kind of hold on to it so it's really pulling. And as that happens, you notice there's a kind of pull down on that core that I do. And that will really wrap it in. And if you don't get every piece with a big fluff on it, that's okay too. Um, like I said, after you wet this and hang it, it'll make up for the difference. It'll be so fuzzy that you won't really see it. And of course there will be some flyaways, but um, that's the nature of the beast. The core spinning should help with that. The little bit of wire, uh, water to keep it under control will also help. And when you get to that end there, you can roll a little on. Now this can also be done without a core, but you have to be pretty good with Angora and shorter fiber. But um, as you can see, we've got a fairly long staple here. I've seen shorter with Angoras and I've seen longer. But this seems to work very well. And I won't torture you with doing the whole skein. But I did want to talk a little bit about making it a little thicker. They kind of overlap. And like I showed, it's kind of a little pinch and a drag. See, I'm kind of pulling it. A little pinch and then a drag pinch and a drag. And just to show you, I'm on there pretty good, as you can see. It's not coming off. And you can even just, because I disturbed it now, hit it with that little mist. Lovely. And a pinch and a drag. And of course you'll develop your own little technique. Hey, maybe you'll find something, a better way to do it than I have. And that's great. We all have our own little nuances and things that we like to do. I really enjoy spinning this on the Traveler, um, Ashford Traveler, which I got from my dealer, which is Pam Blasco at Dream Come True Farm. You'll find all that information when you find this YouTube photo, video. So here we go again. A pinch, a drag, a pinch, a drag. And you can see that I've got quite a bit on here and there's still quite a bit left in the box. I would stick with a smaller amount than this. I've been doing this a while, so I'm kind of used to holding a lot, and even sometimes this will get away from me. But you also want to be very clear of what your little threaded hooks are doing, because sometimes they will get a little clogged up and you don't realize it, all caught up in the maintenance of getting all these fibers going in the right direction. You don't realize that because it's such a tailspun that you got hung up here. So you want to be sure to take a periodic look at all your orifices, your hooks, your bobbin, make sure everything is going well and um, you know enjoy the fact that you're making this amazing exotic style yarn. Also you'll notice that there's not a lot of VM, any vegetable matter. I, before shearing, take great effort to keep that under control. I do not keep my rabbits in cages all the time. Um, even though a lot of rabbitries feel that if you let them run around in a pen it takes away from the growth of the fiber, the food, the energy goes more into play than growing. But um, I love my bunnies. They um, are taken out in a screened in play area for fear of a fly hit or any parasites that might get into them. And I let them play and it's kind of amazing. I have a few of these bunnies that can play together. They grew up together and um, although that's 
unusual as well. Most rabbits will fight, so you have to be careful with that. It just happens to be a special condition with me that I have two brothers that can be together, and I have a female in a French silk. This is an English Angora. This is Harry Belafonte. I love this rabbit. He's amazing. If you could feel this, you just wouldn't believe it. All these rabbit fibers are different. I have a French silk, Grizzly Adams, and his fiber is gorgeous, but it's just amazing how different. Again, just to keep that fly away and the static down a little spritz, you don't have to do that, but it works really well for me. Now when you get to the end of a batch in your hand and you find that you've got some shorter fibers or they started to fuzz up in your hand possibly from sweat, you can just kind of use your finger and roll them in there. They'll almost just felt on themselves and then you've got somewhere to start with your next batch. You know, it's a real labor of love to share these fibers so that they stay like this and to keep them this way. And I sure do appreciate that you spent the money and are going to try something new. Maybe it's something new for you. Maybe you've done this before. Uh, also, one of my plugs here on Tail Spinning Angora with Ashley Ann's Hands is the Spinner's Notebook. Just a fabulous resource that Pam Blasco and I have And uh, our latest edition has wonderful tips and trip techniques and some add-ins and it's also available. You can if you found this link, you will have found a resource to connect with the spinner's notebook, something that you can collect different fibers from different animals and your favorite resources and farms and shepherds and shepherdesses that you have retrieved them from and add it to what we've already accumulated for you so that you can keep your own notes and uh, remember what's good for what particular project what fiber you liked a lot, what fiber you didn't like so much and uh, we start you off with some great samples of all these different animals and farms trying to keep these breeds alive and uh, support our smaller farms. And that's the Spinner's Notebook and you can find that on Pam, Pam's Fiber on Facebook, Ashley Ann's Hands, there's many resources to find that, as I said, if you found this link. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the box here, and uh, yes, you can probably do this without this fiber being prepared like this, but you're not going to get all of the ends to be coming out in a nice fashion. It's just not going to be as savvy. So all of my hard work to make sure that these fibers are all going in one direction really makes the whole project worth it. Now when you get to the end of the box here, it is kind of good to put a little spray in there because there's a chance, depending on what the weather's like, that it could get a little staticky. Also, I really made this a little thicker than someone else might or a, some, a new person trying this. So you might even get a little more out of this. But I like the way it looks when it's really poofy. 
these sort of skeins are fantastic as trims, as, um, well, jewelry if you plied it or auto wrapped it, which will be just the second part of this video. Um, I personally absolutely love to add these into my weavings. Weaving has become my latest fun and the halo that Angora makes really shows off beautifully. And of course you want to reach into this box and get every last little bit of fiber because you paid good money for it. And uh, you'll get that gorgeous haloing even with the tail spun effect it will still when tightened into a weaving really be beautiful. So we got a good amount on the bobbin. I'm going to go ahead and take that off in the nitty knotty and I'll see you in a few seconds. One last thing, you're going to want to tie off here. I kind of pull through so that I can make a little loop and tie, but it doesn't really matter how you do it, just so long as you don't let it unravel while you're on that nitty knotty. You know, as many times as you need to to ensure that it's not going anywhere. But like I said, it's on there pretty good. Of course, if you really yank on it, it will come off, but it's least likely to once it's set. Also, when taking it off, um, I like to keep a little bit of tension on the bobbin while I'm going on to the nitty knotty. It helps me to be sure that it's not going to fall apart, that my spinning was up to par. I'm also kind of gently rubbing my hands across the fiber as I put it onto the Nitty Knotty. That also will grab any loose fibers that you may not have got on there really tight. I mean it happens. It's not a lot, but it happens. Of course that depends upon your level of expertise as a tail spinner. An Angora tail spinning would really be the extreme. I like that extreme tail spinning. So we've got a good amount here. Also, when you come off the end of the bobbin, make sure you got a tight grip on that end and a nice little knot will assure that that's going to stay together. I, like I said, like to go twice. It's just me to be sure. And I would suggest when you're tying off your skeins to use something that you can see because it will surely get lost inside the tail spun Angora bunny fiber. Okay, so this came out to be 24 yards, which is not too bad for Angora tail spun. And, uh, core spun. Now, you may ask, can you dye this? Well, yes you can. You have to be pretty gentle with that. You can't put it into a roaring boil. And um, this is Harry Belafonte, so he is kind of gray. It's going to be a bit of an over dye. But depending upon what your project is, if it's going to be something that's going to stand out a lot, I do recommend plying it. It will um, really accentuate it. You can use some pretty silver or um, just a kind of a neutral color or something really to spice it up and that will truly hold it together if it's going to be a fringe or something that's exposed to a lot of wear and tear. I really hope that you enjoy this as much as I do and I'm going to process this and hang it and let it dry and let it felt just a little bit so that it has some substance and then Continue to watch the second half as we do probably um, not an auto wrap, but just a regular ply. It depends upon what I decide. Thank you very much for watching. Ashley Ann's hands. Thank you. Bye.